Dr. Jenkins, what relationship does America have with early Christianity in Korea? Well, that's a beautiful relationship. Uh, the Catholic Church brought Christianity to Korea earlier, but it didn't really take off until the American missionaries came from the United Methodist Church and also from the Presbyterian Church. And Reverend Underwood came from the uh, Presbyterian Church and Reverend Appenzeller came from the Methodist Church. And those two streams are the main streams of mainline Christianity in Korea. The other thing that's fascinating about these early Christian missions is that they grew the strains of Christianity and it was true father's parents that joined the Presbyterian Church and father started out his Christian experience with the Presbyterian Church. Mother's mother went to the Presbyterian Church until she was 19. How would you say God was uniquely preparing the Korean people through Christianity to receive the second coming? Well, already we know from the divine principle that God had prepared the Korean people as a nation to receive the Lord in his return. And therefore, there was a providential plan from even thousands of years ago in case uh, the chosen people could not fulfill their responsibility. The providential plan would be to bring that Christian experience to America and then also to bring it to a nation that has incredibly deep spiritual traditions of family values and honoring the Creator. And Korea has 2,000 years and more of that kind of spiritual background where ethics and morality and doing what God wants or doing what the Creator wants is very deep within the tradition, so deep that the grandfather and grandmother is honored above all the other family members, and then it transfers to the parents. So I think the Korean culture is deeply prepared for the Christian experience because Jesus comes as the true parent. He comes as the Lord, and he comes to bring grace, but also he comes to make our families closer and more ethical, more moral, to be really living the word. Jesus said, those who keep my commandments are the ones that love me. What would you say was the artistic atmosphere of the nation surrounding the birth of both Father and Mother Moon? Well, as, as Mother shares in her memoir, as True Mother shares in her memoir, it's a very deep uh, situation with the fact that they're a, under a colonial rule of Japan. And it was, a, it was a very subjective, very insensitive rule, brutal. If people were caught studying Korean, they would be punished severely. And sometimes they would be sent to prison and even executed because the, they tried to destroy the Korean language. There was no respect for the Korean people. They were lower level humans in the eyes of the oppressors. So that atmosphere is interesting point that we see in Christian history is when there's severe persecution and suffering, that also creates an atmosphere and a time that's ripe for people to turn to God. And I think Christianity flourished, actually flourished under this kind of circumstance. And two streams of Christianity formed, those that were mainly the above ground churches that were really the traditional Presbyterian and Methodist churches, uh, many of them to, to continue to get permission to operate, had to allow a Japanese Shinto shrine to be placed in the center of the altar. Mm -hmm. And uh, if they didn't do that, sometimes the churches were locked with the people inside and burnt to the ground. But then the spirit-led churches was that other stream that went underground. Basically, they were meeting in people's homes, and they were being led by the revelations of God connected with the Bible. It's like the Pharaoh oppressing the Israelites. I mean, they were conditioned by that severe oppression in Egypt to leave Egypt and seek for God. And I think in Korea, it was even stronger because they didn't try to turn back. They went deeper and deeper into Christianity, so much so that when Billy Graham went there on his first big crusade and had over hundreds of thousands gathered, he said the fervor of Christianity in Korea is the strongest in the world. And we can see that in father and mother's early life and their church life. When we show the picture of the Holy Lord Church or the 
or the New Jesus Church, you can see that the these Christians were dedicating their life not just on Sunday or not just on Wednesday night Bible study, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. They were living for the Lord. That's why Mother testifies that even she remembers as a, a young child seeing her mother bow hundreds of times, even thousands of times to Jesus, preparing meals for Jesus. And that kind of that kind of attendance was so deep. And even when we went there with ACLC years later and went into the Korean churches, we'd go at 5 a.m. for prayer, and we'd find the churches were packed with people at 5 a.m. before work, praying before they would go to work. You know, looking at father and mother today and going all the way back to that root, how important is the root of Jesus in the life of father and mother moon and their work? The life of Jesus and the life of father and mother are, are one. They're one. That fervor of Christianity that was there in the early days, true father and true mother took that level of fervor and increased it tenfold, I would say, because they not only lived for their church or for the nation, but they went to the whole world with the love of Jesus to bring the whole world together. And that's why father and mother were called to America. They felt to, to really fulfill their role as anointed as true parents, they had to come to America because that's the epicenter of development of Christianity. And that's why they came. And I think that there is no separation between Jesus and father and mother. That's why I'm starting to see from the memoir, wow, how close mother is to Jesus now, right now. And then father's words from the Champumo Gang when he says, from the time he met Jesus on that early Easter morning until today, and that was like in 2005 or six, he said, I have been speaking with God and Jesus every single day. Every day I talk with them. It goes back to True Mother's uh, mother, uh, Hong Soon A, who's called Damon M. Great Mother, and also Grandmother Joe Wan Mo. Because Mother testifies in her memoir about how she can never forget that feeling of their fervor for Jesus. And it's like she said that I could, I came to the place in my life where I could, Jesus is real. I could feel Jesus. I could, I could sense the presence of Jesus. I could even, I can even taste the presence of Jesus. The Lord is with us. That's why I think Mother's discernment with these Christians as she formed the World Clergy Leadership Conference is, is so sensitive and so real. She immediately, immediately understands the value of great Christian leaders because she can sense it, she can taste it, she can feel it. The Korean independence movement occurred in 1920 and uh, 1919, 1920, and the Korean independence movement was really the foundation for True Father's birth on January 6th, 1920. We also have the fact that True Father's grandfather always told him, if you feed people from all over the nation, the blessings of the nation will come to you. And Father mentioned that because of that, his home was always a place that everyone was welcome, whether it was a beggar or a neighbor. Whenever anybody came in, they always were fed by True Father's mother. He wanted to learn Japanese because without learning Japanese, he didn't feel he could really properly address the oppression that was going on in Korea at that time. Also, Father was greatly influenced by his, his great uncle, a pastor, Yung Guk Moon, who was a Christian pastor. And along with True Father's grandfather, they were very active in the independence movement in Korea. And they suffered greatly for it uh, under Japanese rule. It was then when he was 15 and 16 by Western counting on Easter Sunday, uh, he had a profound spiritual experience with Jesus. My encounter with Jesus in the year I turned 16 was a profound spiritual experience. It was the first of many revelations and the special encounter I have continued conversing with the living God and with Jesus even until today. I also had conversations with saints and sages in the spirit world. I cannot describe in words all the things we shared, but for nine years, 
Jesus guided me in the words of truth. God chose me in accordance with his providential timetable. He taught Sunday school and he went to church every Sunday and he really got more and more deeply involved with the Christian experience. In 1941, he went to Japan and uh, he went to Waseda University and studied electrical engineering and he became a leader of the Christian Student Association there. Because he was strong in the independence movement himself with Christians, he was severely tortured and put in prison and uh, almost died from it. At the age of 26, Father's public ministry began. He started to really, you know, have deeper and deeper callings from God. His life was finding those prepared people. People were having dreams and revelations. One of those people that was very central was Reverend Kim Bake Moon. And he was the head of the Israel Monastery. And Father went there and studied. Father made it very clear it was ordained that I would inherit everything from Reverend Kim Bake Moon. After six months, Reverend Kim received a revelation from heaven, and he would put his hand on my head and he blessed me saying, may all the glory of King Solomon from throughout the world be upon you. However, his disciples started following Father because that's what they were living for. They all believed that the Lord was going to come anointed by Jesus as a man in Korea. And when those disciples started to unite and follow Father, unfortunately, he became jealous and he pulled them back and still Father received a blessing from him, but the, the sad thing was Kim Bake Moon did not come together with him, and therefore Father had to go to the next course. And that next course was he had to go over to the western side of Korea where women spiritual churches were developing. And the Korean spiritual churches were re really receiving these revelations that the Lord was going to come to Korea. And they were also receiving revelations that the Lord would not come in the clouds, that he would come as a man anointed by Jesus, born on earth. The Holy Lord Church, Mother's mother was part of that church, as well as Grandmother Joe, Mother's grandmother. And one of the most dedicated followers of Reverend Kim was Reverend Ho Ho Ben. So Father had been prepared by God to meet all these people. Reverend Ho Ho Ben took over the Holy Lord Church. They had thousands of people, and those people were making clothes for Jesus for every three days of his life. Mother's mother was also called to make those clothes, and they had to sit down, sew the garment completely, and pray over it. And they couldn't get up for any reason until the garment was finished. This is the kind of dedication. They would, they would just really be preparing. They believed with a fervor that the Lord was coming to Korea and he was coming anointed by Jesus. The Christians that were jealous about her church growing so fast went to the communist authorities at that time who were coming in after the World War II and they threw her in prison. And it was there that Father met her. Father didn't meet her directly, but he knew he was being called to go see her. She had a revelation. She was looking for the Lord in prison. And Father was in that prison Unfortunate, she couldn't accept, and Father went to Hung Nam Prison. And in Hung Nam Prison, he had to gather 12 disciples there. Just like Jesus had 12 disciples that all abandoned him at the cross, Father had to gain 12 disciples that would stand with him in prison without being able to speak. In prison, Father had to read every morning the, the Communist Marxist Manifesto. He talked about it every morning, the first hour, they had to read it aloud, and then they had to write letters praising what a great teaching it was. Father refused to write those letters, but because he was such a hard worker, somehow he was able to survive. And then he was about to be executed. It was the night before he was about to be executed. The United States Army came uh, after they landed in Incheon and Hung Nam Harbor, and Hung Nam Prison was bombed. And because of that, Father was able to escape. And he did not go south like others. He went over to Pyongyang again and for 40 days witnessed to his church members. One of the church members that he got was Wan Pil Kim, who was a longtime faithful member. Father testifies that Wan Pil Kim is the one that actually fulfilled the John the Baptist role. He had to do it as a member of the family movement or the unification movement 
at that time, and he was a substitute for the John the Baptist from the mainline Christian churches or the spirit-led churches. And they, with Mr. Pak, who had a broken leg, who escaped prison also, went all the way to Pusan. Father built the first church out of cardboard uh, ration boxes from the U.S. Army, and he and Juan Pil Kim started witnessing. And they would paint portraits of U.S. Army soldiers, and they started fundraising right away. He founded in 1954 the Holy Spirit Association for the Unification of World Christianity. Mother remembers her grandmother saying to her over and over and over again, God is your father. God is your father. So mother testifies that she grew up feeling God is my father more than anything else. Mother's ancestor, Jo Han Jun, a uh, very famous story was passed down for generations upon generations of how he was the one that built the bridge over the Dalai River. He spent his whole fortune, he spent everything he had, and he built that bridge over the Dalai River for the public, sacrificing everything he had. And right when he finished, he received the re revelation that your descendant will give birth to the princess of heaven. So mother has that kind of ancestral background. And also, Mother remembers from the earliest time, Mother's grandmother, Jo Wan Mo, was such a devout Christian, so serious as Christian. I mean, they're really, truly praying every day and sacrificing and bowing to Jesus and that kind of thing. Mother remembers walking to church, and they go to church every day. And Mother remembers walking to the church, the Holy Lord Church, uh, also the, the inside the womb church. And mother uh, said her mother, Hong Sune, would hold her hand and, and say to her as they walked, only one and only daughter of the Lord, that's who you are. You're the one and only daughter of the Lord. Another thing mother remembers, her mother saying that right after she gave birth to mother, she remembers eating seaweed soup, which was the tradition after you give birth. And then suddenly, right after she had that soup, she had a vivid experience with Satan force of evil appeared to, to Damon and said, if I let this baby be, the world will be destroyed. He yelled at her, I must do away with her right now. So mother remembers that her mother was constantly getting this kind of experience where Satan was around the corner trying not just to hurt them, but trying to kill mother, that kind of thing. When mother went south, they went 125 miles on foot. The tensions are rising with the North Korean communists there. The Korean War hadn't started yet. They get close to the 38th parallel. North Korean soldiers capture them and held them. But one of the elders there who didn't know Mother kept telling Mother, give the soldiers some food. So Mother would take food to the soldiers. Mother believes that's probably the reason why they let them go. They let her, her go and her mother, and they told him, go back north. But of course, as soon as they got out of sight, they went south and they made it. They made it all the way to Seoul. June 25th, the war broke out. Stephen and his brother said, we got to leave. We got, I'm going to get you out of here. I'm going to bring an army vehicle and get you out of here. So they, they wait and they wait and he doesn't come. And finally, everybody in the city from all these little homes throughout the city of Seoul are rushing down the streets. And the mother and Damon M were rushing down the street and, and they were just going down the street and it was so crowded you couldn't even move. But but grandmother said, no, we, we have to wait. We have to wait. We have to go back. My brother's coming. And sure enough, he comes with the army truck, puts them in the truck. They drive through the crowds, just like, you know, molasses moving through the crowds, but they got through and they got across the bridge, the Han River Bridge. And then soon as they got across, he said, hit the floor in the truck. And then mother remembers an incredible blue flash and the truck shook and the whole Han River Bridge had to be blown up because South Korea was now, they were, the North Koreans were coming into Seoul at that time. So that was terrible. Mother's mother was praying. I know Jesus is coming. Jesus is here. I know he's coming. Out of millions of people, they run into Mr. Jung, who was part of the Holy Lord Church and knew about Ho Ho Bin and uh, inside the womb church. And because of that, they got connected with him. Damon M went to Champadong, where father was, 
and she met Father for the first time in 1955. It was an amazing thing. And Mother says in her autobiography, my mother lived an exemplary life of, of authenticity as a religious person, always putting her faith into practice. She studied the Bible and shared these teachings with me of the Holy Lord Church and the Inside the Womb Church that Jesus would return as a man in the flesh just as he had come 2,000 years ago and that he would find his holy bride and that would be the marriage supper of the Lamb. From my mother, I learned the meaning of Jesus' second advent. And then, you know, she joined the church right there. And then it was a couple months later that she brought mother to meet father. It was 1956. Mother recounts that I greeted Father Moon politely as he returned the greeting. And then he asked my mother, who is this child? And Damon M said, this is my daughter. With a look of surprise, Father Moon gazed at me and said, you have such a pretty daughter. Then he closed his eyes. What is your name? And I politely replied, my name is Hak Jahan. And it was as if something struck Father, and he softly spoke to himself, Hak Jahan has been born in Korea, and he repeated that three times. She moved to Seoul with her mother, and she was very active with the Champadong Church. And then when she was 16, uh, she went to St. Joseph Nursing School, and one of the reasons was Mother saw so many people were still completely wounded and, and sick and destroyed from the war. years ago when she was on the world tour and we had a breakfast meeting with mother with many pastors one of the pastors asked her what's it like to be the mother true mother of all humanity and mother then got tears in her eyes and said i feel so much how much god's heart is in pain and I don't feel I'm even worthy to comfort God enough, but I have determined that I'm going to do everything I can to comfort God because of his suffering. And then she said, when I met Father, I felt he was the one that understood God's suffering more than any other person I'd ever heard of or seen even in the Bible. True father and true mother are like the highest level of the Korean culture, the highest level. They can win all Korean people. They can touch every level of Korean culture. But also the same uh, feeling comes in Japan and the same feeling comes in the Western world. When father was and mother were inviting us to East Garden, and we would have meetings all day. No one ever felt that Father was from Korea. We felt he was from God. And that's how Jesus was, one with God. Father and mother are one with God. So you don't feel they're from a particular culture. You feel that they're from heaven, they're heavenly. And that's why I was amazed with Father and mother's ability to relate with the clergy. The clergy are like they're their main representatives. They feel that that's the main representatives that God prepared to communicate true parents' message of blessed families and, and grace. And uh, their ability to just win clergy's heart. I saw them together when Bishop Stallings was at the breakfast meeting on the first couple cities of the 50-state tour. And Father told him, Bishop Stallings, to be a man leading the family movement, you have to be blessed. You have to have a wife. You have to go beyond your, your old traditions and have a wife now. And he said, what do you think about that? And he said, I want a wife just like true mother. <laughs> and then mother said, how many children do you want to have? And he said, I want to have 12 children. And then mother said, so practically, and everybody laughed at the table. Well, how are you going to pay for those 12 children? You better think about that because it's a big responsibility, but God bless you, you know, and that kind of personal relationship was, was so uh, moving to the clergy. Father could, could he loved to, to touch the, the heads of those clergy that didn't have any hair. He loved to do that. He loved to just, you know, and it'd be very wonderful discussions, and suddenly 
when we were leaving, father would put his hand on their head and rub it. and <laughs> Nobody minded. They loved it. It was that close. He could grab them by the beard. And mother's very different from that. Mother just really cares deeply about their lives, about everything, how they feel. Are they hungry? Are they, they need any more? Mother always creating the best meal. 